everybody, welcome back to another episode of Doki Doki Literature Club. I'm really enjoying this series so far. I've, like I've said, I'm still very anxious as to when this psychological horror element supposedly is supposed to kick in. So I'm still kind of, I guess, edgy. <laughs> I am an edgy character right now. <laughs> so until then, I guess let's just enjoy what we can. So, Sayori, what happened earlier? What do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki? Does that thing, kind of thing happen a lot? No, no, no. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't, you don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. It's just one of your opinion, that's all. I can see why they, they'd make good friends with you. You know, Satoru, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you too. That's... <laughs> giggle every time. Every day is going to be so much fun. <sighs> Looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the, the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but... Does it really need to stop there? Well, we'll just have to see what the future holds then, Sayori. Pet Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her. But it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's do this. Another poem this time. Okay, wow. So they're really making you think about this a bit more. Hmm. I want to see if I can do something about this the idea of circle of life here. Let's see if I can start with childhood and work my way up there. Um, it's an adventure. Mm. It's precious because it's childhood. Why not? Mm, I'm trying to figure things out here. Verti wow, vertigo. Uh, not know what I'm looking for here. But it's also variant. But sometimes can be full of misfortune. Existence. <laughs> Skirt. Why? It's unending. Yes, that's definitely one that would be useful here. Um, scars. Related to experience as life goes on. I'm really getting into this a little bit. Tears from the pain of the bad experiences. Anger from others. <laughs> doki doki. Not the word I'm looking for, but it's fine. Actually, that's not even a word. It's a okay. It's a word, but it's more of a. Uh, what is this word? Is it automatopoeia? I think that's a word. Explode. I'm getting no uncanny marshmallows, skip it, captive. Uh oh god. I'm gonna go with eternity. Um tragedies can happen. There's always desires, dreams. Um Valentine and Connor and Claire is the idea of love. I should have clicked that suit. No. And there's a lot of times there's anxiety. <laughs> there's Kawaii again. Uh, I've seen a lot of repeated words, so I'm guessing they just random randomized the words here. Incongruent. Wow, that's a word I didn't expect. Hmm. I gotta think this one out here. Be a good one for this. Awesome works, but I'm trying to find things that kind of balance out the mood here. It's kind of what I'm aiming for at the moment. Let's see. I'll try. I guess I'll try hopeless here. 
Sometimes you'll feel hopelessness, but there's destiny. And life is always a thing. Quest for happiness, maybe? Yeah. Happiness. Let's see, how these, let's see how all those work out together. The idea that I was going for, hopefully, if that does apply to anything, or hopefully, I wonder if the game can get it. If the game could pick that out, that'd be amazing. But I, I, I'm put it, probably giving the game too much credit here. But the idea I'm aiming for is the idea of the circle of life. Life can be a mystery and at the same time it can be a pleasure and a pain. It's unpredictable, but it's your destiny. That's basically what I was hoping for. Those are words that I'm aiming for. Let's see what that does. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple of days. Entering the classroom, the usual scre screen? The usual scene greets me. Hi, Satoru. Yo, Satoru. Looks like you're in a good mood today. I'm never gonna voice that. I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you, huh? Speaking of which, kinda hungry. Of course you are. Will you come up here to buy a snack? Uh, no thanks. Why? Eh? That's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Oh! <laughs> I think we caught her. Why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Uh, so you, so you, she doesn't have any money, does she? So you, Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill into the desk. Only two small coins fall out. I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. It's not fair. How do you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. That's not necessarily true, but okay. So either you're not hungry, or and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves one option. <laughs> that face is adorable. I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri. Yuri suddenly giggles. Huh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is always in her book. Her, her face is in her book, as always. Uh, I wasn't listening or anything. Sure. There's just something in my book. Yuri. So it's her to let me to let me borrow some money. That's don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering has fair enough retribution. <laughs> ah. Did I just I didn't mean that. <laughs> She's so cute! <laughs> too absorbed into my book. <laughs> oh my god, I'd hug her right now if I could. That's funny. I really like it when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You're right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. Yes. <laughs> Revolut- That's not- That was the wrong word. That. Still, coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little this the devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she's told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> oh! Nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow. What was... Is that Natsuki? A cookie! Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitu- re Retribution! 
Actually, that one almost worked. Yeah, uh, okay, I'll agree with you on that, but not really. <laughs> Natsuki kind of reminds me of, uh... <laughs> Oski a little bit. Especially that grin. I can see that exact grin on Oski from Kinekopara. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you. Then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. I was, it was totally worth seeing a reaction, though. Natsuki. That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. How big is this cookie? Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rap op tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. Sure could. Sayori <laughs> suddenly clasped glass, glass, cl her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. Oh, I hate it when I do that too. Natsuki's the one that's giggling this time. You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Oh, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Why do you think I gave you that one? Oh, I see. Yeah, fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. Sayori is the like, most innocent girl right now. I still want this, like, hug thing that they are doing right now and rendered, or someone's drawing that out. That'd be amazing. I'm sure it's been done. I just haven't looked. Sonny gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, oh, jeez. Especially with that face of Natsuki. I kind of would- I actually kind of want to draw that out myself, probably. If I have the time, though. I get it, I get it. Cookie's still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Um... Oh, you sneaky little one, you. So they suddenly leans down and takes a bite of Natsuki's cookie. Hey, should you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouth full, so really trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori... Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica is in the club room. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Wonder why she's late. Hmm. She could be busy with like a board of like a the club president uh, meeting with the student council or something like that. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. You don't think she... she has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She always, she's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Oh, that's an awkward statement for me to hear. Especially as Satsura right now. <laughs> that's true. Excuse me? <laughs> Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. Hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. <laughs> it's so strong willed. Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Why me? Ah, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah. Well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. Oh, I've done that before. I don't blame her. It makes no sense, though. You would have probably heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. That's also a good reason. Piano? I was in where you played music as well, Monica. I don't really. I just kind of started recently. I always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us sometime, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay. That sounds so cool. I, why are you giving me these advances here, Monica? I also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Satoru. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah. I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Uh, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. 
Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? Not, not really. I choose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. Looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished eating her cookie. Yuri is back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Satoru, Satoru! Sorry if something comes up to me. I'm gonna go get some supplies from another classroom. Wanna come with me? Supplies? What for? Well, you know how the festival's coming up? Me and Monica, we're gonna make posters and stuff. So I need to go find some crayons and markers and glue sticks. Ah, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Yay! <laughs> okay, Monica, we'll be, back for, we'll be back soon. Ah, are you going with Satoru to get the supplies? There's no need to trouble yourself. I'll be happy to go with him. Ah, uh, but I wanted to go. Don't make me choose between these two. For this. It's so much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. It was just a suggestion. See if you could find poster paper too, okay? Alright. Ready, Satoru? Yep, let's go. Sayori and I exit the club room. I follow behind as Sayori hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, it feels like I'm talking to a kid and to I'm taking a kid to a mall or something. Sayori finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey Sayori, what exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. <laughs> Me and Monica have it all planned out. Hopefully it works then. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yep. We're gonna do a poetry performance. A performance? Of what kind? Well, everyone's gonna take turns on stage and recite their favorite poems. Ah, that sounds kind of dull. Satoru, you're not thinking about it the right way at all. It's not just about reading poems. It's about performing them. Like, you say the lines of the poems like, Between my feet. The last remaining flower beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots, caressing the final joyous moments between my fingers. But to what ends have I summoned this joy? For now, when I look in every direction, the once proper's field before me is but a barren wasteland. Do you like that? Sayori, how do I put this? I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. <laughs> Ouch. Mimi, <laughs> the pouty face. I'm working super hard on this, you know. I, I know, I know. I just meant that it's pretty unordinary, unordinary contrast to your cute self. Don't say that, it's embarrassing. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I'm so excited. The festival's going to be so much fun. So he spins herself around in the hallway again. She is really a carefree character, isn't she? Hey, Satoru, this classroom over here is empty. Let's begin the mission. M mission Oh, fetch for supplies. It's been a long time since I've spent time with Sayori like this. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. <laughs> Still as carefree as ever. Yep, nothing like a ball of sunshine. Drawing happy vibes from the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As the years went by, I began to hold myself up in my room more and more. So going adventuring with Sayori brings about a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. Good old, uh, good old uh, childhood uh, memories, I guess. The two of us enter the classroom. Sayori heads straight to the closet, and I follow. Let's see, what have we in here? Crayons! She pulls up a box full of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand, too. They're kind of dirty, though. Sayori starts pulling various crayons out of the box, reading the color names. Alright, that one's down. Don't get distracted. We still need to find... Wait. I'm looking for my favorite color. Fine, fine. At least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. Ah, I chopped one by accident. Smack. What happened? What'd she do? Oh! Oh, I hate that because it happened so many times to me. That hurts so bad, too. Oh, she's got a bump on her head. That was loud enough to sound like it hurt. She falls to the floor and the crayons spill all over her lap. Yeah, I bet that hurt. You okay? My forehead. Sayori clutches her forehead. Jeez, Sayori. 
It's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. The Sayori is sitting on the floor. I grab her by the waist and pull her out of the closet. You have to move your hands, Sayori. But it hurts. Just do it for a second. Sayori slowly releases her hand from the forehead. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Sorry. There's a huge red mark on the center of her forehead. A bump is starting to form as well. Man, that's gonna swell up. I should find you some ice. That's true. Where would I even find ice around this time? I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to. I'm fine. With looking like a unicorn. <laughs> even once eating from the pain, so he already makes a silly joke. <laughs> you saying? I'll be right back, okay? Okay. I pat Sayori on the shoulder and run out into the hallway. I locate the nearest vending machine. What should I get? It doesn't really matter since it will be used as an ice pack rather than to drink. But I know Sayori likes apple juice, so I purchased that one. In just a moment, I'm already returning to the classroom where I left Sayori. She has one palm on her forehead and is using the other hand to clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. At least they were already in the wrong spots before I spilled them. Sayori, here. I hand Sayori the bottle of apple juice. Ah, not bad drunk. So we we'll already drank a little bit of the apple juice. It's nice and cold. Sayori opens the cap and starts drinking from it. Of course she does. <laughs> Sayori, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, you idiot. Ah. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> oh my goodness. How hard did you hit your head? So he places the bottle against the bump of her head. It stings. Just bear with it, it'll feel better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. Yeah, I'd imagine a bump like that had to hurt. Jeez. I had to hurt a bit. Hey, Satoru. This kind of reminds you of growing up, doesn't it? Eh? What do you mean? You know how I used to play outside all the time? I would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways. Like I usually fell behind or had trouble climbing on the things you did. But sometimes when I tried to do things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump. And I would start crying really hard. <laughs> and you would rush over as quick as you could. You would try really hard to get me to stop crying. That's a this is actually really deep. It's cute though. I gotta say, it, it, I mean, it really, she's really p appealing to the childhood friend bit here. I like it. Kind of reminiscing about the past on that. It's almost as if, like, you blamed yourself and were getting, and, affra and were afraid of getting into trouble if someone found out. Even though it was really, it really wasn't your fault. Uh, uh, even though it really wasn't your fault at all, you know? <laughs> Did I really do that? <laughs> I'm sorry, guys, I had to ruin that. Did I really do that? Yeah, you don't remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was always so focused on my games that I didn't pay enough attention to you. So in some way, it is my fault. It was my fault. Kind of like this time, too. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. That's why I'm... I don't think you realize it, but you're, you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years. You're rushing to help me even though I'm just being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. D don't call me that. I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. But f before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens when you've been friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right, Satoru. I'm so glad that nothing's changed between us. Do you think it'll be like this forever? Forever? If I'm honest to myself? There's no telling where we'll each end up for college or after that. So it wouldn't be fair for me to make any promises. But, well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. <laughs> this is such a cute scene. I love it. Really, 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 really paying off into the romance a bit. I am... If this is really a psychological horror, I am getting very nervous about when it's going to hit. 
Sayuri has a whimsical expression in her eyes. It remains silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should go back. I don't want to worry Monica, you know. Good luck with that. She's gonna see your forehead either way. Not if I hide it under my bangs. Fair enough! Sari hops to her feet. Ah. She clutches her forehead again. She's probably a little dizzy. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. <laughs> well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. I follow Sayori out of the classroom. Sayori plays with her bangs to try and hide the bump without much success. And won't we make it back to the club room? Ah, you're back! Good timing, I was just about ready to sh start with sharing our poems. Uh, Sayori, our forehead. She's fine. Uh, don't worry about it. I was playing with the crayons and smacked my forehead into the shelf. Good one. <laughs> yep. I agree, Monica. Well, anyway. <laughs> Ignored. Were you able to find everything we needed? Uh -huh. I have it right. Eh? Somebody frantically glances around herself. I forgot all this stuff. Sayori, please! <laughs> Calm down, Sayori. I have it all right here. I found the poster paper, too. <laughs> Sounds like you, you ended up doing all the work, Satoru. Ah, well, Sayori... I failed to come up with an excuse for Sayori. I made it an adventure. Yeah, that. <laughs> okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too. Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your poems? Am I going to have to choose again? Guess I should grab mine. To make sure the crayon box is closed tightly, I return to my seat. Hmm. Let's make this one episode a little long, how about that? Might as well, because we're already 27 ish minutes in. Who should I show my poem to first? I want to kind of do the same cycle, but I feel like what I've noticed, what I've noticed from day one was that uh, Yuri and Natsuki are, are like quote unquote the ex true experienced ones, and then Monica and Sayori are kind of like a level or two below them. I don't know what my poem actually looks like. I had to pick 20 words, so you can't really say simple or sophisticated. I want to see what- I'm gonna, let's, let's, let's go with these two first. I want to do Natsuki first this time. No, it's not really any worse than your last one. But I can't really say it's any better either. Whew. Feel what? Oh, well, anything that isn't a train wreck, I'll take as a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. <laughs> what makes you... Wait, maybe that was a compliment. It can be. It's generally a good thing, because it can allow for more uh, criticism. <laughs> Glad to see someone recognizes my experience. Why do you think I chose you and Yuri first? Well then, keep practicing and maybe you'll be as good as me someday. That's, uh... Something tells me Natsuki completely missed the point. Oh, so I wasn't meaning that. Okay. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Really? Eh, yeah, you think so? Yeah, well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you may be on the same wavelength. Two of you have now said that. That's interesting. But you never really struck me as her type. So really has a type all of a sudden? I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so or fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? Ouch! Ouch! Like she's dragging around a dead weight. Ugh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way: if it weren't for me, she probably would just fly away, like letting go of a balloon. You could say that we each take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh, yeah. I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Wow, this one's a bit more worded. Okay. Amy likes spiders. 
Nobody heard about Amy. Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggling, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Alrighty then. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. <laughs> okay, this is actually kind of funny to read. <laughs> One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. I love this one. It's funny. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. <laughs> it doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if, she, if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off with those spider lovers. <laughs> well, I think I found the name of my... <laughs> I think I found the name of my, uh... Episode title. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell everyone. <laughs> that made me laugh. I loved it. I'm actually gonna love it because it's humorous. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. Hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I... I, th I think I got it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. <laughs> like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Yes. Just because... Yeah. Someone who dis does not like anything about someone else just because of their certain view. And that's why I hate politics. <laughs> Do you know people like that? I just answered my own question. Of course, it's about how... It's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can't be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Is it? Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that's just what makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. This is probably one of the most, like, the truest thing I have ever heard from this story so far. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of people, other people can too. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. That's part of the reason why I like writing, but not really entirely. Like, conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow, so look forward to it. Who should I show my poem to next? Yuri! Yuri, uh, maintaining the consistent level two. Uh, number two pick. Let's see what you've written for today. Done, Satoru. Your skills are already improving. Really? Thanks, Yuri. Coming from you, that means a lot. Eh? It's nothing. <laughs> She's so cute. <laughs> I'm just happy to inspire fellow writers. I know you're new to this, so don't worry so much if it seems like you can't get your poem to feel perfect. I already know this very well. You don't need to be afraid to be a little bit more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain, like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings and write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see what's into your mind. It's a very intimate ex exercise. I see. That's a certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing that. I have, um, well, an example of that if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this the poem we wrote for today? Yuri nods and typically hands me her poem. Ah. Uh, ah, it's, it's nice kind of seeing a little bit of a, the curse of handwriting here. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. 
That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread. My hunger curiosity. My hungry curiosity. A raccoon. An urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more... And that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of, the, of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the new, newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken off to following me. You can see that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavolian conditioning. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. That seems like a very positive note. Positively, that could be taken as the the joy one gets out of helping another, whether it be a human or an, whatever. The other one could be the, could be the troubles of an addiction. I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem's about. That's right. It's a bit more closer to my preferred writing style. I'm using the poem as a, a canvas to express vivid imagery and emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, so, so, uh, so my guess is, is positive, the joy of helping others, and the, feel, the good feeling inside you get from it. And the downside is the, the concepts and struggles of addiction. I think it's something that different people can relate in their own way. I wanted to express the feeling that the w uh, I want to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's, it's those sorts of things that I'm. It's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So like the very thing Yuri talks about, <laughs> or uh, not Yuri, uh, Natsuki mentioned in her last poem, the idea of like something. That, well, that's interesting. They almost kind of hit the same topic there. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. It's funny. Didn't Natsuki also write something about- CALLED IT! <laughs> about someone being ridiculed for a strange interest? Yeah. She, she did? Yeah. She was talking about how it, it doesn't matter that what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She, she's right. Uh, I mean, does she really feel that way? Yeah. So it's like you have that in common. That's, well, that's interesting. To me, she seems like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I'm supposed- I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Uh, please don't tell her I said that. <laughs> don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit right now. But I'm glad that you're a good listener. Should I show next? I'm not sure here. No, let's do, uh... Let's do, let's do Sayori. Let's see how that works. <laughs> Satoru. I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. <laughs> I'm not hiding anything. But your poems are so good. Yesterday's and this one, too. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean... You're really the only one who feels that way, so... Not even Natsuki? I guess Natsuki is the least likely to admit how much she likes something. I guess that is true. It does seem that way. She's kind of tsundere, you know? But I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well... I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Did I... Did, that's, that's such a kind of cute one my character just said. <laughs> Stop thinking weird things, idiot. I just mean that you're really expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking. Let's not talk about that. 
<laughs> so yeah, I guess what I'm saying is I can feel more feelings through you than I can through myself. You have that kind of some kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting in my business all the time. Eh? I don't know if I understand. <sighs> you never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you, Sayori? I pat Sayori's head. <laughs> Not a kid, you know. Are you sure about that? Maybe. Sayori starts fiddling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, Satoru, will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Huh? Why? Because, well, it's the first time you've written something for me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Sorry, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. <laughs> it doesn't matter. If she interprets that way, it's fine. We, we basically almost said something like that. <sighs> Have you been listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we go home. Really? Snap. Ah. I broke my pit. <laughs> You're just having a bad day today, aren't you? So you hastily bends down to pick up the piece she dropped. But being inattentive to her surroundings, she bumps right into me. Sorry. It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sorry clutches the desk beside her to support her. Knees shaking. I'm a little clumsy today. Yeah, just a little bit. Let's sit down, Sari. Yeah. I grab Sari's arms and help and help her sit at the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh. Sorry, I forgot all about that. But it's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the... Okay. Like the lid of a cookie jar. This is the secret place where I keep all my Oh, okay. I like where this is going, kinda. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. But there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in a bottle- and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me a lot of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper, my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, to discovering the secrets hidden and the hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow, I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time's elapsed. My, my empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done, I open up, and in come my friends. And they come, in such a hurry. Do they want that my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be my friends, my friends who weren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Okay? <laughs> That's a... Oh. Oh. That took a dark twist. Holy crap. <laughs> did you really write this? Of course I did. Did I tell you I was gonna write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've really been... And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost like kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, okay, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is it came out really good. You should be proud of it. Oh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've got pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah. Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Uh, don't get ahead of yourself. Sonny's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. 
seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to believe Beast Pet's a mystic. Alright, Monica, let's see what you got this time. Hi again, Satsuru. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're really applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Alright. It's pretty good. It makes me think of Sayori, like the other one you wrote. You two are like the dynamic duo. <laughs> That's kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. But you do spend a lot of time with her, even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I'm not shy, it's just... <laughs> I'm just teasing you. I know it takes a bit more time to make friends with everyone. Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them their share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then, too. It's not like... I'm not, like, unapproachable or anything, am I? Uh, no, it's nothing like that. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah. I'm sorry if I'm putting if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. No, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Is this like a warning or something telling me I should probably try to be a bit more diverse in my topics? I'm not exactly sure. I'll see. Well, alright. But anyway. You want to read my poem now? I like the way this one's turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. Oh, oh gosh. That sounds weird. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless... Oh wow, cacophony. Of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a ch a chalkboard on a turntable. That's a weird metaphor. Or simile, I guess, in this case. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. <laughs> what? An endless poem of meaningless. This one's actually kind of hard for me to figure out what it's meaning. Interesting one. Is it like the, is, this is like the idea of something being maybe bothersome, maybe? Or something you're just obsessed with and you want to get out of that, I guess? I don't know. Is it more abstract and. Oh, yeah. I would definitely agree with the abstract part of that. <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with, with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. Yeah, it was still kind of ordered, I will definitely say so it was interesting. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. Oh, I like that idea. You see the paper as white noise. Interesting. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be abstract as a physical expression of a feeling. Or a conversation with the readers. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway. Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Oh boy, here we go. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know what might change your mind. Or something unexpected may happen. I don't like this feeling of uneasiness I'm having right now. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. I don't like this feeling that's giving me. Don't play with my mind. I don't like that. Okay, everyone. We're done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned for today, so if everyone could come with me, could come and sit right in front of the room. 
Is this about the festival? Oh, wait, I'm 50 minutes in. I should stop. <laughs> okay, we'll get into the festival after this. So, sorry. I don't generally like to do really long episodes, but I usually wait for a transition. So, whoops. All right, guys, that'll be it for this episode. Uh, sorry to kind of cut us off mid-scene here. Well, okay, kind of early mid-scene, but still. Um, I don't know how to feel about this game right now, because... It's all very lighthearted and fluffy feeling, but then... Why did you have to go and say that? Why? Oh boy. That's why I, it's uncertainty right now for me. <laughs> so, and I think, I think probably the fact that I knew about the... T one of the tags in this game, the psychological horror tag, it's probably played with my mind more than it probably should. Or maybe it's not. Who knows? Maybe I'm, maybe I'm just psyching myself out here. But anyway, guys, hope you are enjoying this series, and I will see all of you guys on the next live stream or video that I do. Until then, I'll catch all you guys later.